Hey, welcome back, everyone, to another Uncanny Mystic Minds. For today, I have my friend Joe, the Mystical Rebel. How's it going, bro? Hey, brother, what's going on, man? I'm doing, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. I'm really glad to have you on, man. I've been uh, itching to have you on uh, for for a while, so I'm really glad that uh, that that you're on, so we can catch up and all that good shit, you know? Because uh, yes, you're sir. definitely you're definitely my my. Uh, I can say like you're my like my my friend. You know what I mean? Thank you, man. Spot. I feel the same way. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate that. And then so I was like, oh man, I was like, I gotta fucking uh, you know, because I know we're both you know somewhat busy guys and all that stuff. So it's yeah. nice that we can, you know, carve a little bit of time and shit uh, for each other. Like you know, even today, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Like even today, you know, I gotta dip out in a little bit. We have uh, uh like we have Mother's Day coming next week, right? Mm -hmm. And then so today is like uh like a Mexican Mother's Day type of thing. So then I'm gonna that's be cool. Uh, family stuff. Uh, later today so i'll be eating a lot of food at least and then uh i don't think i'm gonna be drinking because uh i i don't think i am because uh the last couple of days i've i've already been having enough you yeah. know including, including last night a yeah cricket, man uh, <laughs> yeah yeah so then uh yeah, like even today, like I've been, I was preparing myself because for the people that don't know, like, you know, obviously in terms of time, like this is uh, early in the morning, not super early, but it's like around eight o'clock in the morning. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, so I was like, okay, I got to make, cause like last night I was out uh, and, and uh, I, I've been pretty much out at the, at the casino playing cards the last weekend. Like I've been, I've been hitting it. I've been oh, wow. hitting it since Thursday, I think. Yes. Yeah, wow. Thursday. Lucky I've been I've been going every day since Thursday, and then uh, yesterday I went twice. Like yesterday I went and I did a morning shift, and then I did a night shift last night, and then so I got home last night. And then uh, I'm not used to like being out late. Like I'm used to like waking up or, or uh, going to bed early and then waking up early. Like I'm kind of more used to that, you know. Okay. And, uh, and then so for me to be up late, I'm like, oh, like you know, I'm I'm not as used to that. But so I've been on a, I've I, I've been on a poker binge, and then so uh, so last night I got home pretty late and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, but I'm in I'm in good spirits. Like I'm having fun, and then I'm awesome. I'm man. That's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then I was like, "Oh shit!" I was like, "I, I got," I was like, "I got to get my shit together for my boy because I got to get on with my buddy," and uh, you know, so I had to like freaking get my uh, get my little caffeine going, and then I had to get my herbal uh, my herbal medicine, and I was doing all that earlier, you know, getting all that ready. And nice. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm feeling pretty good now. You know. Awesome, and, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's been a thing, freaking. Uh, it's a trip how that game works, you know what I mean? Because uh, there's a lot of factors. And then, like, I just notice, like, certain people will catch my eye. And I'm just like, what? I can see so much going on with them. And then it shows in their results. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a trip. It's almost like I could see, like, their – I don't know if it's, like, their aura, but something, like, in their energy. And I can really see them thinking, like, really processing a lot. Wow. And then, okay. Uh, and then they happen to be getting their very good results. So, uh, like this morning and last night, I've been thinking about those people that tend to stick out like that. I'm like, well, what is it about them? So, uh, I guess in a, in a nutshell, like they're very conscientious, like they're very conscientious thinkers mm -hmm. and they're very inside themselves and then they implement it. Cause that's the other thing too. The final part is to implement it or whatever. So exactly. that's kind of what I noticed. I'm like, Oh, like it's like very, like the opposite of like, uh, like autopilot style, you know? Mm -hmm. Because they're taking advantage of the people who go on autopilot, uh, autopilot in a sense. Yeah. Like, like you can kind of see this dynamic, and I'm like, okay, like that's like that's really a thing. Because, uh, yeah, you know, so I'm I'm kind of trying to see all this stuff, I'm trying to so I can kind of get better, you know, because I'm still, you know, I'm I'm okay, like you know, I'm I'm decent, like I have my good days, and then I like uh, I have my days where I get my ass kicked too, so. <laughs> we all have those days man we all yeah. have days where yeah. we're doing excellent with whatever it is that we're doing and then all of a sudden things just start to hit the fan so yeah yeah and then so i'm like okay like what's going on? and then so uh yeah so i'm doing my best to like freaking pick up those things or, or like like notice those things that i've been like backtracking on and i'm like okay like no, like this is kind of how, how the people who have success, this is kind of what they do. So I'm trying to see the the formula. Like there's like a definite formula, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. So yeah, so that's where I'm at with that. Yeah, I've been I'm enjoying that. Like, awesome, man. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, uh, what about you? Like, what's in your what, what's been going on in your life? You got anything going on? Uh, you know, like in, like in terms of like any summer, like any summer kind of plans or like any kind of things going on like that, like just like regular life shit. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I'll probably be going to the beach house a few times this summer. Um, I'll be down in Florida. My uh, brother and his wife and his kids moved to Florida a few years ago. So we're going to go down there uh, to go hang out with them for about a week down in Orlando. Oh. Um, yeah, so we'll be down there probably end of July, early, early August. And then, you know, the beach house up here. Um, but other than that, uh, I'm just trying to really get my... Uh, get my social media, you know, going uh, with the Mystical Rebel brand, you know, trying to, uh, my my audience has been asking me for a Patreon. They've been asking me for courses. They want me to write a book. Oh, so I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to do all of those things and Beautiful. Uh, you know, give, give the people what they want. So that's my big plan for, yeah, for the summer. Yeah, man. Good shit. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, well, you're, uh, I would, yeah, I totally see that. I totally Fuck yeah, dude! Like that makes all the Thank sense. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm I'm trying to take it to the next level. Like I'm I don't just want to you know be on TikTok live streaming. You know I I want to really get it to the next level. I'm really trying to build a community. So hopefully yeah. by the end of the summer I'll I'll have something to showcase to people. I feel it, man. Yeah, well, freaking uh, yeah, I really respect it because uh, like Thank uh. You. Yeah, well, yeah, because you, uh, well, because you've been showing, like, for people that have followed your stuff, like, you you show it, like, and then, like, even, like, in layers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you really show it, and then, like, uh, like uh, I mean, I have discernment, you know what I mean, Pr to, a, right. to a pretty good extent, and then, so, like, that's why, like, I can feel people, like, either, like, when they're powerful, like, well, just, just how I was saying a minute ago about how mm -hmm. I'm noticing certain people, like, their auras or, or their, I can see them processing, like, I can, I can notice them, and then, so, it's I, real. yeah, and then, so, I have a, so, uh, that's why I like, uh, I like having you on, because it's, like, I really freaking get a lot out of it, there's, like, a lot for people to get out of it, like, there's a lot uh so you, yeah so 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 for you that's super cool dude like that's super like a uh, legit for me yeah like that like that like that would be something to get into like you know thank so. you dude i i hope it lives up to to the expectations that people are are uh, having because my discord's a little crazy with asking me for all these things so hopefully <gasps> i can live up to the hype hell yeah dude yeah well just take your time you know yeah, and then, and then you'll and then you'll you'll let it you'll 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 end up whipping it out, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> yo, oh yeah, good shit, dude. Freaking um, well, what about like uh, is there anything that like uh you're into like in terms of like I, I don't want to get like too personal, but like that you that you've been incorporating like in your personal like in your personal routines or anything? Is there anything that you've been kind of inspired by lately? Yeah, um, lately. So every day I. I do my ancestor veneration um, and being a hermeticist, I try to go down what's known as the chain of manifestation. So God, uh, I used to skip the fixed stars and go right to the, the planetary spheres and then the elements and then my ancestors and so on and so forth. But lately I've been including the fixed stars. Um, so that's a new thing that I've been adding into my practice. Uh, the three layers uh, that we would call the son, the father and the Holy spirit. Um, but, uh, they're actual stars uh, that have attributes and spirits associated with them. Uh, so I've been adding that into my practice just to see how, you know, things might either be better or maybe not better or whatever. So that's my latest sort of experiment to see if there's anything uh, that I can add to my practice by adding in the fixed stars. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. so uh, how you just said, like the, like the father, son, Holy spirit, like the Trinity thing, like, uh, yeah. You said it. Uh, I'm sorry. I I didn't get it. Like it was like layered. It's like layered with, with the stars like that. I'm, uh. Yeah. So um, I uh, I don't think I'd be able to show you here. And if I can, I have no idea how to do it. But um, if if you were to Google like say hermetic cosmology or hermetic chain of manifestation, uh, you should see um, sort of like a Neoplatonic um, spherical. I don't know what to call it. I don't know, spherical uh, sort of view of the universe, right? That's that's their cosmology. And it starts at all the way at the top with, with God. And then the next layer would, or the next three layers would be the fixed stars. So it would be God, and then it would be the Father, and then it would be the Son, and then it would be the Holy Spirit. 
And those would be the three layers of the fixed stars. And then under them would be the seven planets or the seven governors or the seven spheres or the seven archons, as they call it in oh. Gnosticism. And uh, then after that, it would come to the earthen sphere uh, where you would have the elements and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Um, it's it, it would be much better if I could show you. I don't, I don't have an a image of it anywhere um, except on my, well, actually, maybe I can pull it up on my phone and see if you can see it from my phone. Because uh, yeah. when I okay. when I go live on, on TikTok, I can pull it up in the background. Um, so let me see, screenshots. Okay, here we go. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah. So okay. the top okay. three layers here, one, two, three, that's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That little oh. thought bubble right there is God. Uh -huh. The naked woman right there is Sophia. And then the... The seven rings, he, oh, oh, what happened? Okay, there we go. The seven rings under Sophia are the seven spheres. So this, uh, this area it, right here. Uh-huh, the seven are contact. Right, and then that's Earth oh, and man. So it, obviously it's not that great because I'm showing it on a phone, but. Uh, yeah, okay, but now I see what you mean by the layers of the, because I was like, oh, yeah. like what? Oh, that's so cool, man. Yeah, like uh, the the uh, I guess like that Trinity was like like that was really uh, one of my like one of my foundational things for sure. Like that's like what I that might be what I yeah like that might have been like my foundation in a sense of just how I started to like in terms of like archetypes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like that was the first thing that I took to as like my base or whatever. Yeah. That's now, right. I, I should make the distinction that we don't see the Trinity as as God. We see God as above the Trinity. As as you saw, God was that oh, thought bubble yeah. that was above uh -huh. it. And then under God, there was the Trinity. Oh, okay. Um, and then under yeah. them is the Sophia. And then under her are the Archons. Then under them is the, is, is the elements and then us. So it's... Yeah. Uh, it's sort of like an emanationism, you know, uh, everything yeah. emanates from God. And the further away you get from God, the lesser and less divine you become, which is why man has a dual nature. We are immortal in our soul, but we're mortal in our body. So, and that's because we're so far removed from God. For sure. Yes. Yeah. Kind of like the source, kind of like it, it looked like a little ball, kind of like my little ball yeah. here, like the source or something, which is kind of like a, it's all. Yeah. It's, it's a thought bubble, um, and that's supposed to represent the fact that we look at God as as like a mind, right? And, and not like a brain, but like as the general eminent consciousness of the universe, of, of the cosmos. And so we call him mind, or in Greek, the noose, or new, however you pronounce it. I don't speak Greek, but I think it's noose. Uh, and, we, and we say that when God has a thought, that's how the world became that's how the universe became god had a thought and then that thought was sophia and so on and so forth so nice i like how you said thought bubble right because like in like the comic <laughs> strips you know like yeah the, yep like, it's like in the bubble yeah. yep that's exactly what it is yeah 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 well in in that picture that's not what i mean god's not a thought bubble but that's probably the best way the human mind can sort of try to comprehend He's yeah, and he yeah, because like there's like that sourcey vibe to it, like that yes. kind of a vibe, or like yes. even like the the like because like whatever, because you can write whatever in that thought bubble, you know, mm -hmm. for that comic book character or whatever. Like, exactly. Yeah, kind of even like a, I mean, it, it even kind of looks like looks like a cloud a little bit, so you mm -hmm. can like a cloud vibe, like a celestially vibe or something. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, like from the top, right? Or something. Yep, top down. Uh huh. That's so oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because like for me, I guess like with the Trinity, like one thing that I had learned like in a nutshell from it is just like the the magic of the Trinity. So like if I like for me personally, like when I wrap my head around all that stuff, um, it was like, okay, well, the one is three, and then like the three is one. And then mm -hmm. that's like how I could see like a magic trick or whatever. Cause it's like, how the hell could the one be a three and then the three be a one? But that's right. Like, uh, like true you know and so yeah yeah so for me, that's i think a, i think a good way to look at that is i like to compare it to a business right so i so and and i call this as above so below right so as it happens in the heavens so shall it happen on earth and vice versa so a good way to think of the three being one and the one being three is think of it like a company right so 
one guy can start the company, but he can't run the company by himself. He needs help. He needs his director of marketing. He needs his, you know, vice president of acquisitions. He needs the HR director. He needs the accounting director. He needs the, you know, the servicing director. He needs all those people to help him. They all make up one company, but they're, but they're six, seven, eight, nine, ten different people, but they make up one company. So the Trinity can be seen like that. It's it's three separate beings, but they make up one God or one institution. And that's why the Catholics look at it like that. They call it the divine institution because oh. it's three separate beings that make up one thing. So think of it like, you know, uh, I work at a bank. So we have a CEO and then we have all the vice presidents and whatever. Our CEO obviously can run you know, the company, but not by himself. He needs those people to sort of help him. So that's probably, or at least that's the way that I like to explain it. So that way people can kind of understand because most people, you know, know about a CEO and a vice president and all that other stuff. So I, I try to put it in that sort of lens. For sure. And that makes sense because, you know, like everyone has to, ha has to have like their own delegations and stuff like yeah. that. Or yep. whatever and like the like responsibilities yeah and and each part of the trinity if we're going with 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 the christian perspective they do have their own separate roles and some of them don't know the things that the other knows i mean in the bible jesus who would be the logos or the son says that you know when it comes to the end of the world no one knows the time or the hour except the father so the son doesn't know when the end of the world is going to happen and yeah. the holy spirit doesn't know when the end of the world is going to happen only the father yeah. so they have separate roles separate you know things that they do so yeah yeah totally right because like the son the creation wouldn't know because it's like off of happening to him and right. then maybe father like you think of like maybe like the like father time so he would know what time i don't know yeah i'm not sure why the holy spirit wouldn't wouldn't know per se but but it but it makes sense to everyone how we're saying everyone has their own delegations and like their own mm -hmm. like like everyone reaps their own different fruits of their labor yeah I mean, like everyone gets their own thing you know, exactly so. yeah that's dope man yeah it's like um i'll tell you this dude like lately like uh as this time goes on and stuff like that like uh you know because uh you would talk about things like in terms of like the new age stuff like in like how uh like say things of like manifestation and then how mm -hmm. and like, yeah, like it's like watered down versions of things and then how yeah. uh, when you kind of get into their stuff they don't really like it's like they don't like uh they kind of give you like the runaround with like things to back it up you know yeah and, and yeah. so uh and then now lately it's a trip because it's like when i hear like these things of like these channeling things that people are taking and they're using it and, and like they're just thinking that like like there are places for mantras you know mm -hmm. like for sure like i i know i'm sure you've experienced the fruits of their labor you know and and yeah. then and, and me too and uh but uh that doesn't mean that like just doing the mantra and this and that doesn't mean that uh sorry my neighbor's dog is barking let me close these yeah windows. don't worry all right. Sorry about that. Yeah, don't worry, dude. Yeah, like, uh, like, just because like you heard like some channeled stuff from like say Abraham Hicks, is, and then and then you think you can start <laughs> talking about things like, uh, it, like it. I keep seeing this more and more, and then I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh man, like it's almost like people are getting suckered into like getting the runaround when it comes to like this kind of stuff. They can help your spirit and help your soul and stuff. Yeah. Like that. Uh, with I, forms of enlightenment and stuff i think it's because we we live in a very give it to me now an instantaneous world right um i spoke about this a couple of days ago on my live stream right we had 3g and that wasn't fast enough now we need 4g that's not fast enough so we have 4g lte that's not fast enough now we have 5g that's not going to be fast enough they're going to want fa we live in a world where everybody wants everything to be like their coffee or their ramen, instant. And unfortunately, spirituality is not instant. You have to work at it. That's why it's called a spiritual or a religious or an occult practice. You have to practice it and continuously practice it. There is no put it in the microwave and press 30 seconds and then boom, you have a full-fledged religion or spiritual system. It's something that you have to work at and people want it instantly they don't want to do the shadow work they don't want to spend six months to a year developing their third eye they don't want to open their top with vision they don't want to do all that they they want to just sit here for 30 seconds meditate and be told that you're spiritual you're talking to your ancestors or michael the archangel or whatever and that's what they go with because that's the way the world works we 
we want everything right now. Everything more, has more, to be more, right faster, now. faster, faster, especially in America. Yeah. You know, dude, yeah. I'm telling you now, like, even when you go, uh, when I drive on the when I go towards the Bay Bridge, I think there's mm-hmm. like the little billboards, like right before you get on the bridge. And then now, I think the latest billboard was and 10G coming up next, or and 10G <laughs> like, is, is the future now. Like, like they're already. Like, yeah, like that was a, like like the latest one that I saw or whatever about 10, 10 G. It, it's insane. Like, how, like, you can't wait two minutes for a two hour movie to download. You need it to be downloaded in 10 seconds or else your attention is elsewhere. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And that's the kind of world that we live in. And as you said, especially here in the U.S., everybody wants it right now, right now, right now, right now. Yeah. And spirituality is not like that. I know the new age tries to tell us it's like that, but it's it's not. So, yeah, and it's like a testament to like, uh, I mean, dude, like, I mean, there are very <laughs> good things with social media because that's how we hooked up. Okay, so like, there's yeah. cool, there's there, but the whole thing of like, you know, when things get like pop, like, like with pop culture and like the big, like the big thing, and then so now things kind of with social media because it's it's big that uh, people can easily get veered into directions of thinking that that's, that that's the, like, uh, that that's all there's to it. Yeah. And, and then, and like, they think that that's, that, that, that that's all there's to it. And then, so like, there, there's a lot of, uh, uh, like, uh, spiritual bypassing is just around the corner. Yes. Like, yep. pretty much. like if you spiritual didn't already, bypassing. Yep. If, if you didn't already do it, it's around the corner and, and that's, mm-hmm. it. and then I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm perfect and I'm not thing from it too. Like I, I've been having to work on myself too with all this stuff. So like, that's why I started this little, like I kind of preface by saying this as I've gotten to like, like hear some of your stuff more and more and time goes on. And you know how like as weeks and months go by, things sink in more and like they naturally, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and then sometimes even just the whole act of like forgetting about something like, you know, once you just kind of like aren't tripping about it so much. And then later on, once you think about it and you start seeing this stuff again, it hits you. You're like, Oh, like now you can really soak it in even more. Cause you kind of like let it digest. And then, so I think that's where I've been coming with things too, you know? So I'm like, Oh wow. Like I see, like, it's like that's a good. big, it's like a, yeah, it's like a big booger, like <laughs> hanging out of humanity a little bit. Yeah. Like, you know how, yeah, but I guess yeah, like I, a little kid, like imagine a little four, three year old with a booger, and it's like, well, he's a little kid, you know. So it's like, what do you, you know what I mean? Like, what are you gonna do? Right. It's, yeah. But it's still a booger. Like it's still a booger hanging out of someone's nose. You know? Right, and it's got to be fixed. You got to clean that up. Yeah, you need to find a Kleenex or something. <laughs> at least use your damn. At least take it old school and you know. Right. Yeah. Whatever. I, I'm sure we've you know we've all done that. I've done that. So of course you know and so. Yeah, so that's where I've been at with that. Uh, with that, and uh, yeah, and just real quick to go back to the foundation thing that 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 you had mentioned, how the new age tries to you know say things, but then when someone asks for proof or a foundation, they don't have anything. They they do the runaround. Um, they're almost taught to do that. Like if if you go to your local Barnes and Noble, or screw that, if you go on Amazon and you type in new age spirituality, right? Pick 10 different books that have the look inside me feature and go to the table of contents. I am 100% confident because I've already done this and it's on my YouTube. I'm 100% confident that anywhere between 70 to 80% of the books will not have a bibliography. They won't have anything to back up what they're saying. It's something that was pulled from that author's ass that they just wrote down for whatever reason and now and now they're selling it and people believe it. Whereas on the flip side, if you go to the occult stuff and you look through those table of contents, 70 to 80% of those books do have a table of content. Not all of them, of course. Some books are written, uh, either they're self-published or it's UPG. But for the most part, they have a bibliography. They have a suggested reading. They have a work cited because it's not pulled from the author's ass. It's something that the author can trace back to someone else, who can trace back to someone else, who can trace back to someone else, and so on and so forth. Whereas the new age, we just have to believe them. We just have to trust them. And if we don't trust them, we're mean and we're low vibrational and we're still asleep and all these other buzzwords that they try to use to make you feel bad for not believing them. It's guilty. Uh, it's it's guilty. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, well, like religion, like like uh, Catholics and blah, 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 like will use guilt. You know what I mean? Don't, yeah, you know, and then, 100%. And then this, is a, this is another version of guilt with like with like being the good guy. 
or something mm-hmm. like that, you know? And so, but it's still a version of, a uh, of trying to dupe you, you know, yeah. like I'm telling you, man, like that's one thing that, that I saw like last night and, 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 and however I've been going to play cards is that the people that are good, they find a way to, uh, you know, that game hot potato. Yeah. You know, like that little kid game hot potato. And then when it, when it, whatever, like whoever has it last is a loser. Right. Right. So wh- whoever, like, let, let's just call that duping when you dupe someone like, they're they're good at that and then that's good at like that works in poker is because it's a form of, of manipulation <laughs> so you can use manipulation for good or for bad you know so to, so that's like they're putting hot potato on you in terms yeah. of being like the good guy or the the self-righteous guy and then so that yeah so that's why i've been learning to like give that up and so from back then, from some years ago with like a course in miracles that was like my huge you know dump that i had to take to start to release this you know yeah uh, Cause I did a lot of stuff. Like I really freaking worked that shit, dude. Like I mm-hmm. really did. And then, so it took a long time, like to like, I had versions of like, uh, you know, like those sayings of like, there's like different versions of like, uh, like when someone mourns, like, the, or like the stages of anger, I had stages mm-hmm. of dropping this stuff. Like where yeah. at first I was like angry, then I wasn't angry. Then I felt weird, but like I had different stages. And then, so I, like, I've been going to, you know, I've been doing my version of all that. So. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's not to say that there's nothing valid in the Course of Miracles or there's nothing valid in a Zachariah Sitchin book or a Teal Swan lecture or Elizabeth April. Video oh, Teal Swan. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my I'm, God. I'm, I have some wild stories. Oh, my God. About yeah. That yeah. One. Yeah. I, I think she like runs her own like cult or something like that I, I think there's like a special on hulu or something about her running like a cult or something along those lines i don't know i don't want to you know get yeah. sued for slander and libel or whatever but i think i think that's on hulu but yeah uh I'm, I'm i'm sure that you know they do have nuggets and kernels of truth here and there but just like rat poison right 98 percent of the rat poison is edible foodstuffs that no one would ever assume is poisonous but it's that last two percent that is going to poison you and kill you. And so while Teal Swan or Elizabeth April or Ralph Smart or whomever might give you a nugget of truth, like we're all one or love is the answer or something like that, great. But everything else that's that's around that is bogus. And yeah. they pull you in with that truth. They pull you in, there, they pull on your so emotions. There will be so much game in it where I'm like, damn, like, I'm like, dude, they must really be channeling this, you know, like for a while, like, cause it was so much. Right. Yeah. But then later on, you see like, uh, like the comparison, how, how you said rat poison, the, the analogy that I would use would be, uh, like a hamburger, like a hamburger. Right. And then imagine okay. you have all the ingredients, but like the cheese or, or the lettuce is like a lie. And then at that point, yeah. once you eat that, then it, you know, but it's the same concept. But like the burger tasted hella good, like there was it was so juicy and it had all the condiments and blah blah mm-hmm. blah. And but that so, lettuce was moldy. Yes, and then from there <laughs> it gave you a version of E. coli, and now you're yeah. in, the, in the shitter and you're 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 hump, you're slumped over the 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 throne or whatever. So, yeah, and then so uh, it's a trip. And then I don't know, like now that we're talking about this, because I'm I'm getting like you know because I use like I'm I'm trying to I get feelings or whatever, right? And like. What I'm feeling right now, like as we're talking about these things, like the last couple minutes, it was giving me flashbacks of when I first started going to those new living expos, which is a new age expo. Think about it because oh. it has the word new in it, right? Right. I was yeah. going to these things like, uh, I don't know, over a decade ago, like 15 years ago or something. Mm-hmm. Right? They would have them in San Francisco at first and then they in the Bay Area. And so I would go to these things and then like, you know, from the, the literature, the culture in there and this and this and that, it it feels like flighty where what I mean by flighty is that it, it has all this stuff, but it, it took off with nothing underneath. Exactly. And that's why you're talking about like, like I got that feeling when you talked about the books and the bibliography, because I didn't know to that extent it was like that. Yeah. And then, so now like I'm, I'm picking up, it's all the same feelings. Mm-hmm. Like these first, like they, it's like grabbing it from, and like, there's a lot of truth in there. That's the thing too. Yeah. And then, so that's why it could kind of be like chasing your tail. Like if you're, yeah. So that's why it now is. I'm just like, oh, like I, like I urge, like the like the feeling that I would like to give people who are on this spirituality quest or or, or whatever you want to call it is, uh, to like just like take it like with like a grain of salt. I mm-hmm. guess like, if I could say something, like to yeah. And it's it's salt. it's sad because um, 
the new age doesn't do anything for you spiritually, right? That's that's the trick. It's all about feeling happy and feeling good right now. And, and that's great, right? Your spiritual path should make you feel happy, but that should be a byproduct. That should not be the goal. The goal should be to elevate your soul and to get you back to whatever you think God is. That should be the goal of every spiritual person in the world, not yeah. to be happy and feel happy because one day you're going to die and your happiness is not going to matter because you're dead. And now you're now you have eternity to deal with. What now? Right? No new ager has an answer for that. They have no answer for what now. After you're dead, now what? Right? You should know how to what the um what the what the middle Egyptians, I believe, called going forth by day. You would you have to know how to navigate after death. There's no new ager who knows how to do that. Right. You're going to die. We're all going to die one day unless Elon Musk comes up with the life extension chip or something like that. We're all going to die one day and we have to know how to navigate after death. Doing your sound bowl healing and your chakra balancing and your manifestation. That's fine. That's wonderful. It does nothing for your soul. It does nothing for you after death. You're going to be lost. And the new agers don't want to hear that. But that's that's the truth. Your spirituality should make you feel happy, but that should be a byproduct, not the goal. Yeah. And too many people want that happiness that, I, oh, when I'm when I'm doing my visualizations of, you know, Metatron, I feel happy. That's fine. But what are you going to do when it's time to actually meet Metatron? Now what? You have no idea how to how to act, how to protect yourself, how to do anything. You have no idea because you spent so much time trying to feel good in your spirituality. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's like an ostrich that could be happy with like an ostrich maybe could be happy sticking his head in the sand, you know, like mm -hmm. burying his neck in there. Like that's a possibility. And then and then it's like I'm thinking now, it's like, you know what, dude? It's like there's been a lot of money that's been made off of this stuff. Like oh, yeah. I was, oh, I was yeah. to expose uh, you know, over a decade ago, like like just imagine like they, you know, but so and then I'm like thinking with like all that stuff, how you were talking about like people want to be happy. It's like a lot of this stuff because even me you know how i'm not perfect you know like, like no one's perfect and then so when i was going through my phases of even things like this right uh spiritual bypassing or forcing or forcing the blah 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 it's like a, a lot of people uh, like uh who have versions of trauma it's this is like a gravitational thing which is mm -hmm. unfortunate Kind of like how uh, imagine someone who like uh, like people who have like uh, say like not that much of a father figure in their life. Maybe gangs will be uh, kind of an enticing thing, like for sure. Like yeah. kind of like that. So it's like so it's like unfortunate, and then because it it's like because it, so. it could seem like oh my god, this seems so cool. Like this is the way to go, and then in the the harder you grab onto that, I uh, like the. The, the more further the ostrich is going to bury his head in the thing. That's the unfortunate, weird yep. thing. That the byproduct, you know, you, like you talk about byproduct, like, like it's like forcing that part when the other stuff, like that's like the flourishing, like that's like the out, like the outcomes instead, you know, it's 100%. Like, yeah, it's different than the journey. The journey's different than the outcome. I know, I know they're hand in hand, but, uh, but they're still different. Yeah. So. And the funny thing is that the new age isn't even on the journey. They're at the starting line and they think they're running the race. Right. Or I like to say they're in a kiddie pool, but they think that they're in the ocean. The water barely goes up to your ankles and you swear you're in the ocean. And it's like, dude, I can show you the ocean. You just have to come over here. Right. But they, oh, no, you're being low vibrational. You can't tell me. All right, fine. But when you try to dive, you're going to break your neck because that water is two inches deep. Meanwhile, there's a whole ocean over here. We're all at the beach having a good time. I'm trying to invite you, and you just want to stay in the kiddie pool. That's that's fine, but acknowledge that it's a kiddie pool. Stop thinking that it's the ocean. So, and, and you know what's like even more if I, if I could piggyback off that metaphor, you know, and sure. like if you think about like organic and like man-made, right? It's like the pool is man-made. Like 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 whether it's a cool pool or not, it was still made by man. The exactly concept of man and then the other one is 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 nature is like yep. from the ocean direct, is natural. Like, like directly from the shit you know mm -hmm. and then so it's two different things like in one you have the salt you have you know what i mean you have the alchemical component you have the the depth you have the death where you can die in there like in a second and 
Yeah. Uh, like, like there's the whole thing. And then, and then the other one is a bit different. It's like a, it's like chemicals. A, it's yeah. There's chlorine in it. There's like a little kid that peed in it. Mm-hmm. But, but the bottom line is that it was our conception. Yeah. It, yeah. hundred percent, dude. Yeah. So, that, you know, yeah. Yeah. So that's how that goes. You know, it's freaking, um, so I wanted to share freaking, there's been different books, you know, like I, like I sift around different books and stuff like that. And then, um, I had asked you about Lucifer. I was like, Oh, I was like, I want to know. Cause there was like the, the authors like, like Ford and then EA mm-hmm. Colletti, which is our, like, they're like popular uh, authors and stuff like that. And, they have, and like, I, and like, they do have a lot of stuff out there. Yeah. But uh, I was like, I don't know. Like, uh, I guess it felt like a little bit like, uh, they like they might be more like a like what do you call it, like mainstream or something like that you know yeah um I I'm not too f- I mean I okay so I'm familiar with Ford but I'm not like super familiar with his work outside of maybe two or three books but coetting I'm very familiar with um and I would say while EA coetting is a legit practitioner ever since 2012 I feel like he went the commercialized route his stuff feels like infomercials. Like if you remember back in the early 2000s, if you would wake up early in the morning or go to sleep really, really late at night on certain channels, there would be those get rich quick infomercials, buy my real estate system. And in two months, you'll make 100K a month or something like that. That's how I see his stuff today. But if you go before 2012, EA Coetting had about eight books, I think before 2012 that are great, that don't have any of the sensationalism in it. It's, It's still kind of, I don't want to say new agey, but it's still kind of like modernized, but that's because that's where the, the where the community of occultism was at that time. Uh, but it wasn't until 2012 that he started to get uh, more commercialized and more into the sensationalism, right? You know, ooh, watch me in the desert as I summon the dark demon, Arima. And it's like, bro, what? Like, come on. So um I yeah. do like Coetting, but I don't like any of his Become a Living God stuff. So from 2012 on, I oh. prefer Coetting before he started Become a Living God. The guy who wrote Epissimus, Questing After Visions, um, Spider and the Green Butterfly, although that's a crap book, um, Kingdoms of Flame, Works of Darkness, Baneful Magic, like those are the godsends from Coetting. Anything after 2012, in my opinion, is just a cash grab. He's just after the money. Um, so. Yeah, I, I, I guess that's why. I guess that's why I was like, I don't know, like, because because it felt kind of like that, like kind of either like popish or mainstreamish, and I was like, I yeah. Know, I felt, and so Ford kind of gave me a little bit of that too, but I'm like, oh, like there's like cool stuff in there, like uh, uh, apotheosis. Mm-hmm. Uh, like uh, I've been hearing a little bit about that. It was like it's like it's like really cool stuff, man. You know, uh, if I could ask, like, what what's your take on uh, apotheosis? I'm not sure if I've asked you that. Yeah, um, so I don't agree with apotheosis. That's more of a Satanist, Luciferian, maybe even like a demonolater type of a thing. That's where they believe that you can do certain practices and eventually make yourself a god. I'm a hermeticist, so I don't believe that man can become god, at least not through any of his own actions. Um, What I believe is man can become one with god, but we cannot become our own gods. That's more of a Satanic thing. Okay. Um, so oh, that's so apotheosis it's like, it's like being your own god okay okay so that's yeah. like what that's like what's meant by like deifying yourself that's yes what that, that's what that is huh? yeah we okay. we agree with theosis which is becoming one with god not apotheosis that's becoming your own god oh um, so, oh theosis and apotheosis okay. yeah so i agree with theosis and they agree with apotheosis it's it's not to say that they're wrong there are instances where men have become i don't want to say gods but they've become deified they've become you know heroes or men of renown as the bible would call it demigods if you will um but that can only happen if enough people around the world venerate you after death and that veneration elevates your soul uh most of us are never going to have anything like that happen to us um so that's a pretty hard thing to come by unless you're like famous like michael jackson or something like that um other than that there's probably not going to be anybody who actually becomes deified after death. Um, but you can certainly merge with God, become one with God, and get back to the source. But becoming your own God, that's a little, in my opinion, a little dubious. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of makes sense like when you say it because it's like, uh, 
I don't know because well for me I I, I kind of come from the standpoint of like uh, I know like the I, I love oneness and all the stuff that comes from that like I'm a big advocate of that but at the same time uh, uh, between creator and creation like I still mm. also have the distinction and the respect for that so yeah. I'm like okay so you know like and and I'm good with that like I don't know like you know because I've because 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 like with that there's like a relationship and so yeah. I like I like relationship or, you know. That's good, or, man. Or, or a connection, you know, you know, whatever. And so, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, when I was asking about, uh, like, you know, like uh, authors and this and that, I found uh, Aston, or, or, or you told me about uh, Mason, Aston Mason, like that yes. was one, well, one of the people. And then I liked uh, out of different things, I was like looking around and looking around a little bit, and then uh, I, uh, I got the Rights of Lucifer book, okay, by Mason, and I, I like this one. I really do. Uh, nice. I don't think I've read. I don't think I've read that one. Yeah, I'm in the earlier part of it. You know, like the on the earlier side. But I really like it. Uh, nice, sure. man. Yeah, I feel like a real connection with it. Yeah, yeah. if I can recommend, um, I I'm not sure if I told you about it before, but there's a website, Miskatonic Books. Okay. Um, you can visit them, and they uh, they essentially have deals with all the major occult publishers: Wiser, Scarlet Imprint, Nephilim. Uh, uh, Primal Craft, uh, Anathema, all these different publishing houses, they have deals with them where th those houses will send them books and then they'll market the books to the public if you're not familiar with the publishers. And so if you go on that website and you look for Luciferian stuff, you'll find a lot of really deep esoteric knowledge on Lucifer, his mythos, his lore, his rights and things like that. Uh, without having to go through, you know, Ford or Mason or co-editing, which has a more modern take on it. So yeah, oh hell yeah, dude! I want to yeah, because uh, I don't know, because like like I said, like you know, I I would just kind of been looking around through different stuff, and and uh, and then I don't know, uh, I guess I'm just there with that, and like it, it really, uh, I don't know, I just feel like uh, it resonates. So I'm just getting into it. Yeah, and man, so. study it, dude. Yeah, study it and yeah. and see 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 if it's something that that you really want to get into. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm doing, you know, uh, little by little, you know, because I'm, you know, I, I do, I'm, you know, a regular person with my with my regular life stuff. But uh, yeah, right, but right. it's definitely something that, uh, yeah, that, like, I don't know, it just seems like like that's where I'm at with stuff. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, like I, I, I definitely feel it. And, and I feel like there's stuff for me to learn. And so yeah, nice, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Dive in head first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't complain. You know, it's like, uh, I feel pretty lucky. You know, uh, I get, you know, I'm, I'm not like you. You know, I can't claim to be someone like you. You know, where uh, you, you've been doing so many of these things for years and all that stuff. But I have like my versions of things, and then I'm like slowly accumulating them, and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with like how things are opening up in my life and things are panning out and so like for me like that like that's cool like that lets me know that i'm on my little road i'm on my journey and so and so yeah so i can't complain for sure yeah um i'm on here right now i just pulled it up and right on the front page they have diabolic gnosticism which is a a, a take on gnosticism from a luciferian uh standpoint um they've got mark allen smith's queen of hell uh, which is about Hecate from a uh, Luciferian Atlantean sort of a sort of a spin. Um, there's just a, a, a lot on here that I, there's serpentine supplications, uh, which is um, about uh, sort of like um, I guess like hymns and psalms to the serpent, which would have been Lucifer in the garden. Uh, so yeah, there's there's a lot in here if you are interested in. Luciferianism and things like that. That's cool. Yeah, the first one. Can you repeat the first one? That sounded really cool. Uh, yeah, uh, let me go back to it. Uh, page one. The first one was Diabolic Gnosticism. Oh. Um, Mythos and Philosophy by Christoph Kairos. Okay. I wanna, oh, yeah. That one sounds really cool. Yeah. Um, it says, Walking a line between the serpentary current of the Order of Nine Angles, which they're not so great, but uh, and the anti-cosmic current of the misanthropic temple of the temple of the black light. Diabolic gnosticism is an explosive push past the past, both expanding and elaborating 
the definitive and non-Semitic oriented explanation of the Black Flame in all of its forms. Uh, so yeah, you you might be interested in that. Hell yeah, yeah, that sounds interesting. Yeah, that one I like. That one sounds up my alley. For... Yeah, and it's only uh, fifty five bucks. So cool for the hardcover yeah. too. So oh hell yeah for the hardcover. Yeah man. Wow, what the yeah. hell was I looking at? I was looking at something. What was it? It was something pertaining to this same uh, genre. And uh, it, I was looking at about 90. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. It was a uh, – well, it wasn't directly an occultic book. It was uh, this book that uh, uh, Robert Stanley, this guy who has a story about, like, Lucifer and all that, he was, like, on End mm -hmm. of Days Radio, and he has his own stuff. I don't know. Have you, have you ever heard of him, Robert Stanley? I've heard of him, yeah. Um, okay. I don't know of his works. I've I've not read him or anything. Yeah, but yeah. So, I like – like when I hear about it, like it it's super, uh, like super intriguing, super fascinating. On mm -hmm. top of it, I can't necessarily say that I believe it like a hundred percent, like in terms of like if it's for real, for real. But what I am though is very, very fascinated, very, very intrigued, right? Okay. And then so he had gotten a lot of that information that he was talking about, like Lucifer and all the stuff that happened with him, how they got infected, like him and his crew got infected or whatever, and that's how like parasitic stuff kind of exploded out here you know and so there was a whole oh, thing wow. and he had this uh he had gotten that information from this book uh fuck i can't remember the book because he he had said it on in the interview and uh i think it might be on my amazon i i i might check it out but uh that hardcover was a uh, hundred bucks for that book and i was yeah. like you know, i was like it's a pretty penny for that book so i i put it yeah. on my on my saved or I think I did, you know what I mean? So so for 55 for half the price, I'm like, okay, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Because a hundred, yeah. I was just like, oh my God. But it was like over 600 pages, you know? So it yeah. was like well, the humongous thing. A lot of occult texts that aren't in the mainstream, so the ones that aren't published by Weiser and Llewellyn, those are probably the two biggest mainstream occult publishers. Although Weiser's mm -hmm. a little better than Llewellyn, in my opinion. Um, outside of those two companies, most of the books tend to be around 50 to three to four hundred dollars. And it just depends on the kind of edition that you want. Um, some of them will only do hardcovers, so they're expensive. Some of them, like Scarlet Imprint and Hadian Press, will do both a hardcover and a soft cover and an ebook. So, and of course, the ebook is cheaper than both of them. Oh, um, yeah. So, yeah, it just uh -huh. depends on what you're going for and what publisher it's it's coming from. Yeah, yeah, because like, because I'm, from, uh, I'm, you know, because I've heard those names like what Llewellyn and the and then like the wiser one. Yeah. And, and so you're saying those are more like in that range of like fifty to like three hundred or something like that. Huh? No, no, wiser and Llewellyn are accessible. They're um, I've got three wiser books right here. Oh. I, just, I, I bought these earlier. They're like uh, they're they're paperbacks and things like that. So they're cheap. These are like eighteen, nineteen bucks. Uh, but oh, cool. then when you want to get into like the hard covers. Something like from Anathema, this was $60. So, you know, something like this, hardcover, you know, uh -huh. these are more expensive. Um, yeah. Wiser yeah. and Llewellyn are mainstream. So they, so okay, they, okay, yeah. Them. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Got you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's a difference. Like you can kind of see, cause it's like, I, I guess I'm looking for the kind that are more expensive or something like that because I think that's why I was like sifting around. And then like that's why I was trying to get away from like the, uh, more so like the Ford and co type of a feel. Yeah. So I was like, there's stuff there. I'm like, don't get me wrong. Like there is stuff there. But uh, I was like, I don't know. I was like, I think I'm looking for a, a little bit different. Like, uh, yeah, like, dude, like check out this website. Book. Check out Miskatonic Books. I, I I think you'll, if, if you just spend 10 minutes just searching through the first couple pages, you'll find 12 books that you want to buy like right now. I, okay. I promise you. Like the guy that owns this website is. I gotta take it. I'm gonna have to take it easy. <laughs> I would have to amazing. only go one at a time, one book at a time. <laughs> <laughs> you freaking okay. So now that I have you here in person, oh my god! Before I forget, in sure. terms of the Corpus Hermetica, right? Mm -hmm. Is when you look online, like there's a zillion and trillion different versions of this, and I know it mm -hmm. that cannot be it, right? Like, what's like um, the one that? What's the one that you recommend? Like, if someone wants to read that. So there are multiple translations, and that's and that's fine. Um, and that's because it was written in several languages. So uh, there's the original Latin translation uh, that everyone prefers to go with, but then there's the Greek. Um, so it just depends on what you're looking for. The one that I have, the one that I prefer, is this one here, Hermetica, the Dialogues of Hermes Trismegistus, um, from 
Ouroboros press. Uh, okay. I paid $50 for this, I think. Um, so this is the one that I prefer along with, this one is a paperback from Wiser. Oh no, from Cambridge, uh, Hermetica two. So Hermetica one and two are the two that I recommend. Um, but you can get any translation of, of, of the corpus, as long as it is actually the corpus, you're fine. Um, okay. not, not the Kabbalion or not the Emerald Tablets of Toth or any nonsense like that. Yeah, not the Kabbalion. Yeah. 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 Cause, uh, there was like, yeah. Cause, uh, I was trying to remember like what your cover looked like. Cause <laughs> the covers that I had seen like on Amazon, is Amazon even a good place for that? Like, yeah. or, or is that, oh, is yeah. that okay? Cause there was so many and I was like, I was like, I just don't know if this is it. Cause like there was just so many that I didn't know if they were like, I, I, I just wasn't sure or whatever, but yeah. As, as long so as nice it says the corpus hermeticum, you're good. Yeah. By, by a Hermes, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And whomever the translator is, shouldn't really matter. Um, now what you can do is you can compare the translations. Uh, but the good news is you don't actually have to buy them. The corpus is so old. It's available for free on many different websites um because oh, it's in because okay. because it's in the public domain because it's from like first and second century bce so um or excuse me uh ce not bce ce oh. common era um so yeah there are centuries and centuries and centuries old so it's available on like i think it's available on esotericarchives.com i think it's available on sacred text so you don't have to buy them. I have a few okay, translations yeah. that I got for free, but I wanted to get a physical copy. So I can just freaking well. check it out on my on my computer. Yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. Even yeah, better. Man. Good shit. Yeah. Freaking. So um, yeah. I, uh, I guess because your friend, uh, God, I'm sorry. Uh, the guy that you would do uh, that you do Wednesday nights with, God, uh, Alchemic Mason. Yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah. So so like speaking of like Mason and all that. Uh, I have a friend that, uh, like, he's my, like, I've known him for, God, at least a couple of years or something like that, right? Okay. And then we had hung out more again recently, and then uh, and then uh, I ended up finding out that freaking, uh, that he's, like, a Freemason and stuff like that. Cool. And, uh, yeah. And then, so, like, we were, like, talking, you know, we were talking and stuff like that, and uh, I think I might, uh, I'm actually probably going to check it out uh, uh, to, like, uh, he, he uh, invited me. Oh and wow, that, dude! Yeah, yeah, he that's like the me. way in. Like, you can't just walk up there and be like, "Hey, I want to join." Someone has to like yeah. bring you he, in. So that's like the way yeah. in. Dude. Nice. Yeah, he actually. I forgot, Gus, because this was some. This was now at this point. This was like a month ago when we talked about this stuff, and uh, and um, he's 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 something in there. I forgot what term he used, but uh, he's like I, I wouldn't he's, know. I'm not... he's, he's yeah, like he's in there, in there. Like he's some. He's he's officially in there type of thing. Nice and, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because uh yeah, so we started talking about it, and then uh I think I'm gonna check it out, man. It sounds interesting. Like, yeah, yeah do it, dude. I think I'm gonna have to check it out. And uh yeah, because uh it's only about you know five or so minutes from my house, and so oh wow, uh, nice man, yeah, yeah, do so, that, yeah. So I think I'm gonna check it out and stuff like that because uh yeah, there's a lot of different good things that we were talking about, and then uh and so I'm interested. Yeah, so I don't want to check it out. And I've always liked this guy too. Like I've, I've, like I've always, he was always like my bro. It was funny that ever since, like you know, like you know, some people you just kind of hit it off more immediately. You mm -hmm. know, like 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 me and you and like Quinn. Yes. It was just kind of like easy or something, right? Yeah. So he was kind of like similar Effortless. vibe. Yeah. So he was like similar vibe. Like oh, like bro, like that's my bro, right? You know. And then it's funny because then and then. Uh, and then as and then I had no idea about this. And then mm. I found out just last month. And then and then I was like, oh, oh. And then like, you know, and he was, yeah, like just kind of explaining some stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, like that's cool, you know. So I'm, I'm gonna check it out. Like I think uh I think it could be really cool. Uh I think so too, man. I mean, I I'm not a Mason, but my grandmother, before she converted to Christianity, uh, she was a, a daughter of ISIS and her husband, my grandfather, who I never met, he died when my mom was 14. Uh, he was a, um, he was a member of, uh, what did she, I forget what, what, what the name was, but he was a member of, of a Masonic lodge, uh, over in uh, Jersey. And, um, yeah, so, but I'm not a Mason. Um, so I'm, I'm not familiar with all the grades and all the terms and things like that, but I, I, I do have several books on masonry, um, that I really haven't dove into, but I should, um, 
but yeah, I'm not I'm not too knowledgeable on the Freemasonry stuff. I I leave that to Alchemic Mason, Brother Hummingbird, and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, you well you have enough on your plate already, so I think you're doing pretty okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'll, I'll I'll keep you posted with how that goes, but uh, I don't know. It yeah, man. Seems please. Like, uh, yeah, it just seems like. Uh, yeah, it seems like there's some stuff to gain there, uh, like all in all and, and and whatever. So, yeah, it seems pretty cool. So, yeah, I'll keep you updated, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, man, that. please. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, yeah, so let me know, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, I remember hearing you and Quinn, like, because you guys do some lives, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Like, during the week, you guys would do it. And then I caught this at the end. Like uh, okay. at the end, of, like I had gotten, you know, you just kind of tune in, and I heard just the end of this story, and uh, okay. it was like you—you you were talking about you—you uh, you had mentioned like uh, what was it, goblins or something like that? Like, uh, what was was okay. that the one? Like, hmm. uh, was it goblins? That like, uh, have you talked? If about I did mention before? goblins, it was yeah. probably in the sense of either. The earth elementals, th those aren't goblins, those are gnomes, but goblins are similar. Goblins are um, beings of, of the earth. I would consider them genius Loki, but they're, I mean, I'm willing to be wrong about that because I've, I've never worked with goblins. Um, but from what I understand, they are akin to the gnomes of, of earth and uh, certain practices of witchcraft. They have these items um, like, like a goblin chappy or a goblin um, clapper and things like that where they can summon goblins and they'll help with money or they'll help with uh, protecting your home or something along those lines. Um, so it's kind of like a dark, so it's kind of like a dark version of like a gnome, like kind of like a bad gnome. Is it like, so, so like, so I don't know if they're bad, like... but they're mischievous. So maybe okay. they're more akin to fairies. Like they're... a demonic version of a gnome or kind of like that. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I I don't I don't think that they're evil. I just think that they're maybe a bit more chaotic. I guess is the best word. Um, okay. But I I can't say for sure because I've never worked with them. I've only read about them, so I can't okay. I can't say for sure. Uh, but... So so they are a thing, huh? Like in <clears throat> like in in the, in the occultic world, like it like it is yeah. a thing, huh? Like there's references. Yes. Okay, I just found that interesting because I was like, oh, so is that for real? You know, because I just heard you mention the word. I was like, oh, I was like, I didn't catch the story. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I wanted to know if there was like a thing, if you had encountered it like goblins or if you had worked with them or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, you'd be surprised at how many classifications of spirits like actually exist in the spiritual world. Yeah, you'd be very surprised. Tight, dude. Well, speaking of that, like I'm thinking about – um like planetary uh like magic i remember okay. hearing you guys talk about um i want to elaborate but i think like either sometimes when i'm hearing like I, i'm not able to type because i'm busy so like i could just hear yeah. it but I, I wasn't able to to input <clears throat> and uh uh so I, I guess if you could help me out with like terminology mm -hmm. of like distinctions like in terms of uh like when it comes to planetary magic like i guess there's like the intelligence and then there's like mm -hmm. the, the other version like is there like three different versions of like planetary like is there like an intelligence and then like the actual angel part and then there's like a third one is that is that how that goes or i'm not yeah so there definitely is the planetary intelligences they they are you you generally don't mess with them they are they are usually either called in when things are getting out of hand or when you're looking to like initiate into the planet um, that's when they would be called on. Um, other than that, you probably wouldn't call on the intelligence. Uh, so there's them, and then under them, there's the planet, or I can't say that they're under them, but next is the planetary angel, uh, which governs the actual planet. Or not in that way, not the planet, but like the sphere, the, the spiritual aspects of the planet. Um, yes. But then after that, it there's, there's contention, right? So according to Barden, in his second book, The Practice of Magical Evocation, I think it's called, um, or is it Practical Magical? No, I think it's The Practice of Magical Evocation, um, where he outlines his spherical spirits and each of the planets or, or spheres have spirits associated with them. So that's another class that deals with the uh, planets. And then you have something like the Arbitel here that mentions the Olympic spirits for each of the planets. Um, so it depends on who you're talking to we all agree on the intelligence and the angel all of us agree on that but then 
you know, some people might not agree with Barden's take on the spherical spirit. Some people might not consider the Arbitel spirits as part of the planets. Those are like sub spirits. So it, it, it just depends on, on who you're talking to. In my opinion, it would be the intelligence, the angel, and then next to the angel, like equal to the angel would be the spherical spirit. And then under them would be the Olympic spirit. That's how I see it. Um, but uh, huh. there can be like debates about that. Okay. I guess I'm still like, I guess this is kind of more, I guess it was more complicated than I thought. So, <laughs> so let me try to like, is like the intelligence part, like, uh, is that more associate? Oh shit. Hello? Yeah. yeah. My, my screen went blank. Oh, I'm still shit. here. Okay. okay. I, I'm, I'm still here. Back. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh cool. <laughs> um, holy shit. That's never really happened. I, I think, you, you know what it was? I think because I haven't touched my screen. Oh and, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I hope that's what it was. But anyway, I see you. But so okay, so is like the intelligence, is that like associated with like like more like the primal force of the that's actually a really good way to look at it. Yes. The intelligence is used for like so there's baleful or okay, so there's malefic and benefic aspects to the planet. And when you're trying to in uh, when when you're trying to call on those aspects of the planet, you would bring in the intelligence. If you need, um, say, uh, you were doing a, a love working or whatever, and you need help for the love working from that planet, that's when you would go to the angel. You would you would call on Aniel. I think that's the angel of Venus. You would call on Aniel or Haniel, however you want to pronounce it, and call on him. But if if you just want like um if you just want to invite love into your life but not anything specific you know just like just be more loving get more love things like that that's when you would call on the in the intelligence so it can get kind of um i i think it just started clicking now like okay, cool so the intelligence is like it's almost more of like an intangible sense like it's yes. like it's like archetypical and intangible and then the other yes, one is, they don't have a form at least that i'm aware of they don't have a yeah form. and like the other one is more of like how you said you would call on a certain like it's like more more like definitive or more structured yes. and more yes. practical i yes. guess okay very good oh, oh okay 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 i like yeah. that okay so now okay so now that i wrap that around my head uh explain the when you're talking about the Arbitel, because it's funny. So speaking about earlier, I was telling you about that, that a uh, hundred dollar book hardcover that I have on my Amazon saved. I think mm -hmm. the second book that I have on my Amazon saved is the Arbitel. Okay. And, uh, so, but explain uh, how you were saying the sub, it's like a sub one and almost like a third one. Like, a, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. the spirits of the Arbitel are, are, are mainly to teach you things. I mean, they they do claim to like help you live to a thousand years and all that other stuff, but obviously that's not humanly possible. Uh, they are more advisors, more teachers. I do, I do not to say that you can't call on them for physical like things in in your life, but if you're looking for advice on something that that planet would govern, you would call on the Olympic spirits as as they're called, like Oach and Fool and Phileg and all those um, angels or. I don't even know if they're angels. Uh, those spirits uh, that are mentioned as the Olympic spirits of of the Arbitel. So, like, if you needed advice for business, right, you would call on the Olympic spirit of Jupiter or Mercury um, to help you with that. If you were trying to influence a business, you would call on the angel. So, like, if you were trying to get more sales or if you were trying to, you know, expand your business, so you want to influence the business, the angel would help with that. If you just need advice on how to run it better the olympic spirits would help with that so oh uh-huh okay yeah okay dope i see that now uh, yeah it's all clicking there okay now i see what you mean by a sub sub like i, I like now i kind of get that okay that, that all makes yeah. sense very cool very cool. and if you do get the arbitel uh which is this is the one that i have i this was like 35 dollars. if you get the arbitel yeah. and you plan on working through it you also want to get this little booklet here the sworn and secret grimoire it doesn't sound like it has anything to do with the arbitel because it originally wasn't but when jake stratton kent wrote this he's uh he 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 wrote it as a companion to the secret grimoire of turiel which is why it says the sworn and secret grimoire but as he was writing it he found that it had more connection to the arbitel than it did to this to turiel's grimoire which is a false grimoire anyway 
Um, mm. So he decided to switch lanes. And so this can help you with this. Okay. Because even though the spirits in here are easy to call and they come when called, uh, the aphorisms can be very confusing. And the aphorisms is where the magic happens. And so- What's an, what's an aphorism? Um, kind of like a uh, religious um, or spiritual um, invocation or a prayer. Like, uh, I can give you an example. Um, yeah, I just please. skipped it. Okay, so like aphorism 47 says, whoever is constant and devoted to his vocation Will also have const will also have constant and devoted spirit companions who will supply all the desired success. But if you also have some understanding of magic, they will not hesitate to show themselves and engage in friendly conversation with you and serve in ways which are appropriate to their nature and offices, and so on and so forth. Um, it's just like a like a like a spiritual saying or like a spiritual prayer or or, or something like that. Um, and they're very hard to understand if you don't know what you're reading. And so this clears it up a lot. Right on. So that's like, is that Greek, the Arbitel? Um, yes, they're Greek. Uh -huh. Okay. And then you were saying how like, it's kind of like uh, for like those- I believe they're Greek. Uh-huh. For, for that type of spirit work, you were saying it's like, you know, like it's somewhat accessible. It's like it was like kind of more accessible than than not in a sense. Was... Yeah. When when people come to Grimoire tradition and they want to know like, oh, what's an easy Grimoire for me to get into? There's no such thing as an easy Grimoire. But if we were to call one easy, it would probably be the Arbitel would probably be the easiest one to start with because they're not demons, you know, so there's nothing evil to worry about. If you fuck up, you know, they're not going to mess your life up or anything like that. You really can't piss them off. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you could, but I've never heard of anybody, you know, getting in Olympic spirit mad or anything like that. Um, and they come when called as, as, as that aphorism said, um, you know, they, they come when called, they make themselves readily available um so it's quite simple in its in its praxis but where it gets complex is in the aphorisms um and also you have to wake up like early in the morning to work with them like five six a.m stuff like that um so yeah well i'm used to that anyways <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> hell yeah 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 because I, I like the olympic uh the olympic spirits like i've always uh been fascinated with them too a little bit so yeah it's definitely all my saved it's uh the arbitel is 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 the other saved one and that one is how you said like 30 bucks or whatever yeah. 30 something bucks so that was cool like in terms of awesome, that man. or whatever but yeah I'm, but i want to get yeah, i want to get into that how you were saying that katana katonic uh, one where you know you have all these other ones these kind of deep ones and i definitely want to check that out yeah man. Uh, like, Do it. yeah yeah right now i have uh I'm doing the story time. I started story time on uh, with uh, Modern Magic with Donald Michael Craig. So oh, wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm in the earlier part, uh, you know, because it's somewhat. I don't That's know a good book. book. Yeah, I like it. It's somewhat long, right? It was like, is it like, it's like 200 or something, right? Or it's, it's, it's it somewhat... depends on which one you have. Do you have 11 lessons in high magic or 12 lessons in high magic? 12. 12 okay then yeah that's 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 the longer one yeah it's a longer one right yeah yeah i yeah. thought so yeah because so i'm still like i can't remember but you know I'm, I'm i'm chugging along like in the first i don't know was it two chapters you know like i i've been going in there with this one the forward was like super cool too like usually forwards don't have like something that's like they'll catch you you know going mm -hmm. you know, but with this one i had so many forwards and all that it was like very cool i i really like it yeah donald yeah. michael craig was was a very prolific author um, and practitioner. I actually had the pleasure of having an email correspondence with him before he passed away a few years ago. Oh. Um, and uh, yeah, I was, this was back in like maybe 2013, 2014, something like that. And I had his, um, I had his little booklet. Uh, it was called The Truth About Evocation Today or something along those lines. And it was this little, maybe a 50 page booklet. And I didn't really understand what I was reading. So I sent him an email thinking he would never respond, but he, he did like three days later, he like responded and we were going back and forth. And eventually, you know, he was like, listen, if you really want to get a spirit to appear, if you get my book, Modern Magic, and you work through the first nine chapters, I guarantee you, if you actually work through it, not just read it, but work through it and you're successful by the time you get to chapter nine, you'll be ready to summon spirits. And he was, he was right. Uh, I worked through it and I, 
I, now I didn't use his method. I ended up using uh, the method from Rufus Opus, but I worked all the way up to chapter nine and I didn't have the money to buy all the tools. So I went with the Rufus Opus method. Um, so. Hell yeah, dude, that's sick. Yeah, and then uh, that's something that he kind of emphasizes, obviously, in the book, too. Is like, well, yeah, like, if you actually, like, work it, if you actually mm -hmm. practice the, the, the thing or whatever. and then uh, Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like this book. It's off to a great start for me. Like, it's emphasizing things that I've been having in my head, but he he explains it. Like, he, he, like, elaborates on them nicely with, mm -hmm. like, really believing that the thing is there, like, really believe that the pentagram is there, and then, uh, and even with, like, how you, like, log stuff in, like, the importance of, like, tracking your stuff and, and all that stuff. It's pretty 100%. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I like it. So, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. And I'm like, oh, this is something to, like, take your time with. Like, it's, like, really good. Like, it feels like that, like that type it of thing. It is. Yeah. It's yeah. great. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, or I like it. So, yeah, yeah, I'm in the earlier part of it, yeah. I want to say two, chapter two or whatever. Um, I guess before we kind of start to wind down a little bit. Um, yeah, brother. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, you had We had talked about this before, like uh, a while ago. God, I don't know when, but a while ago. You had you had mentioned a little bit about like, uh, I believe this was like an astral projection like technique in terms of like an old, like uh, like using the color blue. Like, was it like, your, was it throat chakra related? The throat or? chakra, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So in Western esotericism, we sort of teach a that the that the point that the soul disconnects from the body is roughly right here. So roughly the throat chakra. And if you're trying to project, we've found that one of the best, most effective ways to do it is to project from the throat chakra. When whereas when you go to the new age, they say project from the heart chakra. That's a little too low. So we have a technique where uh, either right before you're about to go to sleep, if you're trying to lose a dream, or if you're trying to astral project um, at any time during the day when you're when you're trying to do that, to envision a blue ball that starts right here at at the neck, and it slowly gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it begins to envelop your entire head, and then from that point you want to start the projection process. And the results have been insane. People have reported insane results. I have a video on it, giving instruction um, on on my on my TikTok, and people have sent me messages, left comments saying, you know, this this is insane. Like this actually <laughs> works more so than anything I've been trying from the New Age or another system. Wow. Uh, but yeah, we we have a throat chakra method where you gotta check out that video. I don't think I've seen it, dude. Yeah, I gotta. I, yeah, man. I gotta um, it out. Yeah. It's it's on my YouTube or it's it's on my TikTok. It's titled Lucid Dreaming or something like that. Uh -huh. um, but the method can be used for astral projection. It can be used for any sort of astral travel method. Uh, so cool. Is it like one of like your older videos? Should I like do I scroll back or is it kind of like? In um, the I think it's in. I, I think it's in the middle. It's 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 not that far down. Let me, uh -huh. let me see. It's not that far down because uh, I I haven't made too many videos lately. Um, how do I get to my profile on the web version? I don't know. Oh, here we go. Your profile. Uh, da, da, da. Any minute now. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, All right, here it is right here. So it's from it's from May eleventh, twenty twenty two. So about about a year ago, um, and yeah, uh, it's between. Let me close Five that. 11. Okay, it's between my banishing spirits and um, more Christian nonsense video. <laughs> cool, hell yeah! Uh, but yeah, but it it does have the banishing title spirit for, banishing spirits too. Holy shit, man! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got I've got quite quite a few uh techniques on my on my on my page it's not all bashing the new age and stuff like that i, I do I actually give that. instruction i'm surprised i haven't seen that damn it i gotta check that shit out i'm interested in that yeah yeah man uh, i actually have two videos on banishing spirits i have one that's just called banishing spirits and another called saging and banishing um oh, so cool. oh wow. yeah man okay well i guess real quick uh now that th that it's in my head uh what's your take on the lbrp i, I don't think we've talked about that yeah, the lesser basic ritual. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's effective. It's 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 useful. My only thing is that it's not only a banishing ritual, right? It's it's also 
a ritual to or a technique to help you recognize subtle energy shifts so when you're doing magic you know when things are happening right because oh. too, too many people just buy a book and they read it and then they try to do the spell not knowing how to really manipulate energy not knowing how to sense raise and direct energy the lbrp can help you sort of know when energy is moving when it's shifting so that way you know if a spirit is present or if the astral pentagram you drew is actually there and it's being effective but the issue with it is that it takes forever for you to be able to sense those things um, most people say you need anywhere from six months to a year of consistent lbrp practice before you can start sensing the subtle changes so I don't prefer it for that reason. I prefer things like the adjuration of Metatron, um, but it is an effective ritual. There's nothing wrong with the with the LBRP. It's useful. I think everyone should do it. Um, but it's more than just the banishing. It's 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 also to help your energy bodies get in tune with the energy around you. So that way, when things are changing on a spiritual level, you notice it. So when you're calling, say say you're invoking an angel or something like that. Well, how do you know when the angel is present? How do you know that 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 the angel's power or essence is, is felt? Subtle changes. And if you don't know how to sense those things, you won't know that the angel is there and you'll probably be like, ah, this shit doesn't work and you'll give up. Whereas doing stuff like the LBRP or techniques from Maya Ohm's books and stuff like that will help you sense those changes and you'll be able to know when things are changing or if there's a spirit present or you know if if your spell is working or whatever. So um, thank you. That was that was great. And then yeah. two, I'm also glad that you mentioned Maya Ohm because that was the other name. Uh, like a lot of times when I'm listening, I must be like working or something because I'm not able to type, right? <laughs> right, and right. I was like, I remember catching the end of this again. I always catch, you know, you, I kind of catch it passing and going and uh, in terms of like energy manipulation, because that's like one of the things that you talk about that's like a uh, like the one of the stepping stones to all this stuff just how you mentioned like that's why the lbrp you can as you're say working with corners you can feel things pulling and you know like like yeah. you can see whether you feel it or the mind's mm -hmm. eye or the atmosphere and stuff like that or like uh, and so that's why i'm glad with the maya own book because that was the other one that i wanted to check out in terms of uh just just pure energy stuff that was do it, man. Because I know both, you read both of her books, both of them. Uh, the Unspell book and Energy Essentials for Spellcasters and Witches. They're both fantastic. Okay, is this Amazon thing? Or yeah, is, or yeah. Is that these are these are Amazon paperbacks, so uh -huh. they shouldn't be any more than twenty bucks. Cool. Yeah, because it's the truth. Because earlier I'm talking about that I like, like I want to get into the hard covery, those denser, sicker books, right? But yeah. at the same time, <laughs> the, the the paperbacks were cool, man. Like I think those are pretty cool because I'll like I'll I'll rock with my little. Uh, Say when I go play cards, I have my little man bag, you know, mm -hmm. and then with like say like the rights of Lucifer, that shit fits perfect, you know, perfectly in my bag. So when I'm yeah. on my one time or like you know like waiting for something, I can just kind of bust out the paperback because I don't want to bust out a hardback, you know, out in public. Like that's like for my personal. Exactly. Like, my, yeah. My yeah. Book. I wouldn't bring any of my hard covers out. No way. Somebody yeah. might think it's valuable. I mean, they are. But they might try to like steal it or something like that. But no one's gonna yeah. steal a paperback. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even just with the material, like I'm sure I'd want to be in a different place, like reading yeah. like as opposed to the other one, like it's more like you know, like the like the other stuff would probably be more digestible, I'm assuming, with the paperback, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Stuff like that. Hell yeah, dude. Right on, dude. Well, um, I guess before we close out, let the people know where they could follow your uh, follow you and like check out your your cool videos and even your YouTube. I liked how uh, the last time I saw one of your YouTube videos, I was like, oh shit, this guy! Like in, in the in the beginning of your video, like you have like the like the mystical rebel, like it's like a little uh, video thing, you know? Like, oh, the yeah. intro, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 with the demon friend. or the alien or whatever he is, and he like holds his hand up. Yeah, that was yeah. Like, yeah, I remember. And it's like, it was like a little, yeah, like, a little yeah, thing going on. I was like, oh, this guy. I was like, yeah, I it's like cool, your, man. Like it's your cool. own branding shit. I'm like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm I'm trying. I'm I'm really trying to build build something here um but yeah um you know people can find me on my tiktok that's mainly where i post my content for right now in any way tiktok um at the mystical rebel uh my youtube as well also at the mystical rebel i have a website the mystical rebel.com and you can also join my discord um if you go to my tiktok and then you click on the clickable link in my tiktok that'll take you to my stan account where i offer my services but that's not 
important. Um, if you, uh, at the top of my Stan account is all my social media platforms and the Discord link is there. Um, so if you want to join the Discord and you want to get direct oh. access to me, um, you can certainly join up Join up there. It's a growing community. Uh, it's it's vibrant. We have conversations about everything. Um, so yeah. Well, that's... Why am I not on this thing? I have to get on it. God damn it. Yeah, man. I'll send you, uh, I will send you an invite link. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah. I know. I I think we talked about it before, and I, I I never got in there. Yeah. So I'm gonna, but I have to get in that thing, dude. Because yeah, dude, join yeah, up, man. You're, yeah, dude, you're you're definitely one of my main uh, peeps. I'll tell you that because, you know, it's like I'm on this journey, dude, and so I'm going around, I'm going around, I'm checking shit out and stuff like that, you know. And then it's like so, and I keep and I keep coming and seeing you, and I'm like, oh, like. <laughs> I, I know where it's at, you know, like there's certain people where you either feel them or like you feel different versions of them or you feel different aspects of them. And so you're one of my people that, that I feel like that, that I'm, that I'm going, that I'm going with like that and stuff like that. So, you know, nice, so I, gotta, I gotta let you know that. And, and then, so, uh, thank you very much, bro. So, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'll let, you know, uh, I let the people know that, you know, I, I, I recommend you check out the mystical rebels stuff, check out his website and discord. And, uh, yeah, because, uh, you're very conscientious in terms of how you uh, present things. You know what I mean? Like say like when you go and say like just even like uh, like in a TikTok video and you'll respond to someone like those – some of those crazy funny people who are asking to get called <laughs> out or this and that. Uh -huh. you'll, you'll, you'll come back with like very like – you'll like hit them from all angles of like no, you're like you really cover your bases. You cover your yeah. tracks. Like with, yeah. with receipts and with the, you know, like you uh, cross your T and you dot the I, like like yeah, the man. whole thing, the whole thing. So so that's why like it's like one of the reasons why you you you're you're a good person to, thank you for, for people to go to for this kind of stuff because it's it's not the typical new agey stuff that uh, could potentially having you chase your tail like a dog at at least at least at yeah. least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember what it was like being a beginner after I left the coven. I, I got lucky. I had the coven to teach me witchcraft. So I got lucky there. But anything outside of that, I had to be self-taught because I didn't I didn't have a teacher. And so I remember what it was like having questions and no one to answer it. Right. And so I had to just trust what I was reading. And my coven taught me to not ever do, don't just trust what you're reading. You need to have some sort of confirmation, some sort of validation. And so I had to teach myself how to do that, right? So, and now that I know how to do that, the last thing I want is for someone else out there to to like read a book and go, well, is this valid? Or see something online and go, is this is this real? Are people really channeling the Arcturian Defense Brotherhood or Light or whatever? No, they're not. And here's why, right? So I I remember what it was like to not know anything and wishing there was someone to like give it to me and there was no one. So I had to wade through the filth myself. And if I can help people not have to do that, that's my goals. So that way people can have a legitimate spiritual path without as much waste of time as I had to go through. Because yeah, that's, well, that's a great, that's a great service. That's a, that's a benevolent act. Or Thank mean. you, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, dude, it's like, Oh, it's like very common now. Like that's the thing is that it blew up like where spirituality got to be like uh like pop or something yeah. like that. And then and then it's like just say this and just say this and just believe and it's like uh it's like you're force force feeding and you're 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 like self-hypnotizing yourself into some like I don't know what and then like the feel and then earlier I gave the analogy of like the little kid with the booger hanging out, but mm -hmm. Another analogy right now is, I don't know, just that I felt or whatever is like, imagine someone like, how can I, uh, okay, in dancing, right? In dancing, uh, imagine you want to look like like 3D, you know? So mm -hmm. a 3D here could be like a cube, right? But what if like someone is use, is dancing their 3D cube, but one, one wall of that cube is always shadowed, is like always unable to see you're yeah. always going to be running away from yourself you're always going to be chasing your tail like if one of them is not like uh, uh unaware of itself like the dimensions get lost you lost your yeah. 3d you and exactly. then therefore you lost your sense of like uh, being a human because we're still mm -hmm. like in like uh that's why we we're talking that shit about ea co editing with like like okay like uh, apotheosis and like well okay like i there's maybe a thing to it but at the same time it's like 
um, you're like a human though. You know what yeah. I mean? And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. And so it's like a, it's like a delicate subject. And so that's why earlier, uh, take life with a grain of salt. And then that way, maybe, you know, people could pump the brakes on, on things a little bit and then, and then, and then things will unfold and then, and then yeah. maybe, and then maybe who knows what will happen. Right. But <laughs> so yeah well right on dude i'd like to thank you for for coming on and then i'll i'll, I'll have you back on soon because we gotta we gotta keep it up man i gotta we gotta i'm gonna quit messing around and then we're gonna we're gonna keep messing around. you mean you're gonna keep doing it and then i want to get quinn on uh all of us and stuff like that too you know so yeah man thanks for having me on and uh yeah i i can't wait to have another live stream with uh or podcast excuse me with uh quinn um the last one that we did was fantastic so yeah yes yeah Count me yeah. in 100 yeah, it's for, it's good to have different people with different sides, but still sim like, but but we still kind of mend together, you know. So that's always fun. That's always good to see. Yeah, so, yeah, it's cool how that works out. Yeah, so right on. Thank you, Joe. So of course, man. Thank you for having me on, brother. Yeah, yeah, right on. All right, guys. Well, that was another episode for Uncanny Mystic Minds, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Peace. All right, guys. See you later. Thank you.